Good evening. On Wednesday, April 29th, we have got our church prayer meeting uh, tonight and uh, not as we usually would gathering here in the vicarage, but um, over Zoom in our different homes. And uh, one of the things that I'm hoping we'll do is uh, take time to uh, to fix our eyes on God, uh, to praise him uh, for who he is. So just going to reflect a little bit on on that um, uh, theme tonight, slightly shorter evening prayer for us. But listen to this verse from Revelation chapter 7, verse 11. Uh, pictures all the angels standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and they worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honour and praise and strength be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Well, some words of introduction. May the Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So Father God, save us while waking, guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Well, I'm going to read Psalm uh, 72 for us, a Psalm of Solomon. It says, Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. He will judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. The mountains will bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. He will defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. He will crush the oppressor. He will endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon through all generations. He will be like the rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days the righteous will flourish, prosperity will abound till the moon is no more. Or he will rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The desert tribes will bow before him and his enemies will lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and distant shores will bring tribute to him. The kings of Sheba and Seba will present their, him their gifts. All kings will bow down to him and all nations will serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. Let corn abound throughout the land. On top, the tops of the hills may it sway. Let its fruit flourish like Lebanon. Let it thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. All nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. Oh, well, some fantastic um, words of uh, praise out there. Aren't they particularly at the end? Praise be to the Lord, the God, the God of Israel. Uh, psalm 72, a psalm of Solomon as he prays for himself, I suppose, king of Israel, king after David. Uh, but as we've seen time and time again in the Psalms, uh, often um, uh, those that most easily can take the words of the psalm onto their own lips in the fullest sense. Well, it's not us, is it? It's the Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus uh, is uh, the king whom all uh, kings will bow down to and all nations will serve. King Jesus is the one who will rule forever and rule over everything uh, throughout um, uh, all of the universe. And uh, just set me thinking about that theme of, uh, of praise and why it is again and again in the scriptures where uh, we're commanded, uh, encouraged uh, to take on our lips the, the name of the Lord, to praise him, to praise Jesus as our king. And... Um, one of the things that I've been doing during um, lockdown and, and when we've had chance to um, do exercises, I've, I've been listening to the audiobook version of um, Jonathan Edwards, um, the American uh, theologian, 18th century, uh, I think he was, um, uh, 1700s. And um, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a uh, mighty read, but listening to it on audio is a bit um, is a little bit easier. But um, his, uh, his big conviction in this uh, book, The Religious Affections, uh, is that the scriptures... Um, constantly everywhere he says place religion very much in the affection 
such as fear, hope, love, hatred, desire, joy, sorrow, gratitude, compassion and zeal. Uh, his argument that is, is throughout scripture, actually, we see all those kinds of um, uh, words uh, uh, speaking about, the, he groups them and calls them the affections, love and hatred, desire, joy. Um, uh, they, we see them through the Psalms, don't we? Time and time again, those, uh, those themes. How God in his word requires us to be those that fear him, those that, that love him. We're not just to know things about him, but it is to affect our emotions, our affections, he calls it, our heart. Think of the, the introduction to the Ten Commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your soul, all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind and all your strength. And a bit like Calvin, we thought about Calvin a, a week or so ago, um, who was reasoning that um, prayer is not superfluous because uh, the benefit of prayer comes back to us as we pray. God already knows what we're going to ask, but as we pray, the blessing of that flows back to us. Well, one of the things that Jonathan Edwards says is that our praise and, and our joy and all those words describing our affections, our delight in God, extolling his greatness, uh, lifting up his name to one another and to the world, to the nations and to the next generation, is, is not because God has some sort of short term memory problem. It's not because God needs reminding of his greatness. It's not because he's lacking in his greatness and, and we somehow fill his greatness up by telling him how good he is. No, his glory and his perfections and his limitless power and his unflinching commitment, commitment and love to us, his, his fidelity, his faithfulness, his grace, his mercy, his compassion, all of those things. God knows all those things. Uh, he certainly, uh, if he knows all things, he certainly knows uh, about himself, doesn't he? He knows himself perfectly. And so we come to another reason why again and again in scripture uh, we're commanded and, and God requires of us uh, and exhorts us uh, for his glory, but also for our good, that we um, express those things, that we love him with our heart and our soul and our mind and our strength. Uh, because in telling him and in our prayer and our praise, uh, we are reminding ourselves of who our God is. Uh, and the benefit of that flows back to us as it stirs our emotions, as it captures our affections and our hearts and our souls and our mind and our strength with all the perfections of God, all his greatness. So that Psalm 72 can end, can't it? Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. Well, there's a fantastic prayer of praise in the Book of Common Prayer um, called the TD and Lodimus. Uh, we praise thee, O God. And I thought I would use that prayer, slightly old fashioned language. Um, but um, if the blessing of us taking uh, God's praise uh, and his greatness onto our lips and uh, proclaiming it to him, but reminding ourselves, well, this is a great prayer to pray, isn't it? Let me pray. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To the cherubim and seraphim continu tin continually do cry, holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs, that's revelation that we read at the start, praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee, the father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the king of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting son of the father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be unnumbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. 
O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Amen. And so our Lord God, as this outbreak continues, we ask that as your people you would help us to hear your word, uh, your word of command and your word of requirement in scripture for your glory, but also for our good, that we might take on our lips your praise, your goodness, your compassion, your mercy, your grace and praise you for all those things. Praise you for all your perfections, uh, that we might be reminded that we might not forget and that we might keep our eyes fixed on you as we worry. Our Father, help us to cast our anxieties on you for those for whom we love and care for and have concerns. Our Father, help us to lift our eyes and look to you in the midst of our trouble. Our Father, we praise you that you are a solid rock. We praise you that you rule, that you have exalted your King, the Lord Jesus, that he rules over all and that one day all kings and all nations will bow to him. Help us to trust him at the moment. Our Father God, we um, ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So may the Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. And may Christ who sends us to the nations give us the power of his spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.